Four more army ships deploy to the pier-building humanitarian operation off the coast of Gaza. What does the timeline for the operation look like? Produced by Defense News and Military Times, this is the Early Bird Brief. Each morning we bring you the defense and national security news of the day. Today, the Department of Defense deployed four U.S. Army vessels from Joint Base Langley-Eustis to meet the eastern to the Eastern Mediterranean in support of humanitarian assistance operations in Gaza and the mission to build a temporary pier. Also, the White House announced a surprise round of military aid to Ukraine. What does this all mean for our defense and security? You'll find out. I'm your host, Simone Perez. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. First up, the Pentagon announced another deployment of army ships to help in the pier building operation to get humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. Once in theater, these vessels and their crews will establish a roll-on, roll-off pier capability that allows ship-to-shore humanitarian assistance to the people of Gaza. We expect the pier to be fully operational in approximately 60 days, which will be able to facilitate the delivery of up to 2 million meals daily. Officials from the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees said that more than half a million people are at risk of starvation if more aid doesn't make it into the area. For more on this, Pentagon Bureau Chief Megan Myers joins us from the Pentagon. Megan, what is the total number of ships taking part at the moment in this humanitarian aid operation of building a pier to get more aid to Gazans more quickly? So, so far, five have left. Four um, left on March 12th, and then um, another left earlier the previous weekend. Um, so the ships are who have left are the, the General Frank A. Besson Jr., the Monterey, the Amoros, the Wilson Wharf, and the James A. Liu. And these are all Army logistical support vessels. So they are technically ships, but they are, um, you know, run and operated by the Army. And what's the timeline for this mission? And while this mission's going on, how, in the meantime, how are officials saying they're going to get aid into Gaza. Will airdrops continue then? So the timeline is 60 days, um, basically from Friday to get the ships into the Eastern Mediterranean to set up the platform offshore. And then the way that the pier works is it's kind of like a modular build. So the pieces are already on these army vessels and they will assemble it offshore and then they will hook it up to one of these vessels and drive it into the beach and anchor it. So that's expected to take about two months. And in the meantime, the U.S. is still doing airdrops into Gaza um, via C-130. So a C-130 can can drop about a truck's worth of aid. Um, it, you know, it's kind of a cumbersome and expensive mission. And the hope is once this causeway is set up that they, they can get multiple, you know, ships worth of aid in every day amounting to about 2 million meals a day, which is uh, closer to what the, the Palestinians in Gaza need right now. Another important story, the White House announced its first, its first batch of military aid for Ukraine this year. The announcement comes more than three months after running out of money to replace the weapons it sent. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the U.S. will use $300 million in savings it found while buying supplies for Kyiv. Ukrainian troops have fought bravely, are fighting bravely throughout this war, but they are now forced to ration their ammunition under pressure on multiple fronts. And we're already seeing the effects on the battlefield. When Russian troops advance and its guns fire, Ukraine does not have enough ammunition to fire back. That's costing terrain. It's costing lives. And it's costing us, the United States and the NATO alliance, strategically. So today, on behalf of President Biden, I'm announcing an emergency package of security assistance of $300 million worth of weapons and equipment to address some of Ukraine's pressing needs. The package will fund ammunition, anti-aircraft missiles, anti-tank weapons, and artillery rounds, including for the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS. But the latest aid is showcasing stark realities about the state of U.S. munitions stockpiles. The Defense Department used the last of its money to replace what it sent to Ukraine near the end of last year. Since then, the U.S. has been searching for ways to support the war effort as capital lawmakers have failed to pass new aid legislation. Those efforts include other countries transferring weapons to Kyiv that Washington then replaces, rerouting weapons seized from Iranian smugglers, 
and possibly using the last $4 billion in authority the U.S. has left to arm Ukraine. That last option would leave American stockpiles empty since there isn't any money to refill them, but one of the officials briefing reporters said this isn't under consideration at the moment. Here's why it matters. As Congress debates sending more aid to Ukraine, the country has lost territory. Russia seized the eastern city of Avdivka in February. On some parts of the front line, Russian forces can fire 8 to 10 artillery rounds for every round that the Ukrainian military can fire back. Also on your radar for today, the VA announced that it would trim some 10,000 jobs from its ranks. That's after hiring more than 80,000 people over the last five years. For more on this, Capitol Hill Bureau Chief Leo Shane III joins us. So, Leo, what spurred this decision by the VA to trim 10,000 jobs from the VA's total workforce? Yeah, this is a pretty big change for the Department of Veterans Affairs, which last year was really on a, on a hiring blitz. Um, they're up to 458,000 employees right now in their total end strength. Part of their budget submission for fiscal 2025, they're saying, look, we probably are a little over what we need. They're going to trim about 10,000 positions from that total. Now, that doesn't mean anybody's getting fired here or anybody's getting dismissed. This is just through attrition. There are certain positions they're, they're not going to fill, certain places that they won't uh, backfill when people leave. Um, and they said that they are still going to be aggressive in hiring. They're just going to be more targeted in their hiring. So mental health specialists uh, filling in positions in rural areas or places where they have uh, other gaps. Those are still going to be the focus. Whereas when they look at some of these medical centers and they see that fewer veterans may be coming in, uh, that maybe they have a few extra physicians or nursing assistants or just staffers, they'll start to bring those numbers down slowly over the next, uh, you know, throughout 2025. So how do these staffing decisions compared to the VA's budget request that was released on Monday. Yeah, VA, uh, is, the White House is asking for VA to get $369 billion. That would be their largest budget uh, in history, about a 13% increase over fiscal 2024 levels. But it's kind of uh, a little bit misleading because most of the increases are on the mandatory spending side. This is money that's going out the door to veterans' benefits or to uh, medical uh, care expenses, uh, medical care operations, things of that sort. Uh, VA is actually going to see a cut in its discretionary budget. So these are the the optional program, some of the uh, outreach and some of the extra things that they do. Um, so they're, you know, they, they are feeling the pinch of some of this, this uh, new financial environment in Congress and this effort to keep some costs under control. Since veterans benefits are something that they don't have control over, we're still seeing a, a pretty large increase here. So pulling, pulling those uh, employee numbers down is one way to try and save money in some areas, uh, you know, cutting back uh, some of the some of the expenses that go with that, but VA is insisting that this will not mean reduced services or reduced uh, uh, programs for veterans. This is really just right sizing the ship uh, and bringing things back in line with where they should be. And now here are some other stories that we're hearing chirps about. Special Counsel Robert Hur went before the House Judiciary Committee to face questions yesterday about the classified documents investigation of President Joe Biden. The Russian Defense Ministry said a Russian military transport plane crashed yesterday while taking off from an airbase in western Russia. According to the Marine Corps, Marines will no longer be able to duck out of annual rifle qualification early. That's unless they shoot expert in pre-qualification. And NASA's SpaceX Crew-7 completed their mission to the International Space Station. They splashed down safely, they splashed down safely yesterday off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. And on this day in history, in 1942, the U.S. Army Quartermaster Corps began training the first dogs assigned to the Army's new war dog program, a.k.a. the Canine Corps. That's it for us this morning. To get more top stories and breaking news, go to defensenews.com slash EVB to subscribe to the Early Bird Brief newsletter. Please give us a like, rating, and a comment wherever you get your podcasts, and be sure to follow us on social media at defense underscore news and at military times. The Early Bird Brief is hosted and produced by me, Zimone Z. Perez. Today's episode featured stories by Megan Myers, Noah Robertson, and Leo Shane III. Our editor-in-chief is Mike Roos. Have a great day.